G'day, my name is Dr. Robert Courtney. I'm a researcher here at James Cook University and I work primarily on box jellyfish. Here at Kanji are very small box jellyfish. They have a bell about the size of your thumbnail. So the main part of my research that I've conducted here at JCU is I wanted a better understanding as to the factors that drive the seasonality and distribution of the Irukandji jellyfish. Because we needed such a large number of these animals to run metabolic rate research and temperature experiments on them, and we're also trying to better understand the rest of the life cycle of these animals, we ended up in a situation where we were not only holding a lot of animals, but we also had exposure to working with these animals for quite a long period of time. And that kind of led us to this accidental experiment where we had a specially designed plankton chrysal, which is essentially a circular tank where the water rotate, rotates in a, a laminar flow vertically to essentially mimic oceanic conditions. And what ended up happening was we were housing animals in this type of tank and finding these really neat behavior patterns. When we had the plankton chrysal tuned right, so to speak, where the flows were right, and the animals were happy, the first thing we noticed was we always thought the tentacles of these animals were long, but we didn't realize how long that they could extend these their tentacles out. So previous research had suggested the tentacles to be about 750 mil long. But when we got these animals relaxed, feeding, and in a more natural situation, so to speak, these tentacles almost double that length. So what's also different about the Irukandji or the Kurukia um, bonsai jellyfish is that not only do they have stinging organelles, or often called nematocysts, along their tentacles, um, in the case of Irukandji, they actually have groups or bands of tentacles that actually look like small pearls in the water column. Okay. On top of that, these animals also have nematocyst bundles on their belt, so they're impossible to pick up without a glove or some type of protective measure. Each of these nematocyst bands, they actually look like small creatures in the water column. So they look like they're mimicking copepods or some small prey type. What we saw next was not what we expected. We thought these animals were swimming around haphazardly catching unfortunate prey, but the opposite is what's happening. These animals are twitching their tentacles in the water, attracting fairly specific types and sizes of larval fish, which come vaulting in and swallow one of these small nematocyst bundles right in the face. So the really impressive part of this system is this, you have a jellyfish that's essentially fishing for fish, so they're jigging a jig through the water that's mimicking something else. Small larval fish are seeing this as a food source, flying in and just munching down on that and getting essentially a face full of venom. The jellyfish then keeps hold of that poor animal. It's paralyzed in quite a short period of time, I'm talking 10, 15 seconds, and engulfing that prey. It's a really neat type of prey capture that's never been documented in box jellyfish before.